uh, has been here quite a lot over the last five years, the lessons that they draw. Right. They, there are about five of them. First of all, the need for inclusive dialogue. That is, that it's basically good to talk to terrorists. And that is, that is lesson number one that they draw from the, from the peace process in Ireland. Secondly, uh, that there should be no preconditions, that governments, democratic governments, should avoid uh, putting down preconditions like for a, a key question in, in uh, Northern Ireland peace process was when, when would the IRA decommission its weapons? That was the key issue. Um, um, thirdly, that you should keep the governments, democratic governments, should keep the channels of communications with terrorist organizations open through, through this, the darkest hours, through, through the periodic crises that are bound to er erupt. And one example of the way this, this, this lesson was operationalized relatively recently in Spain was after the uh, ETA bombing of Barajas uh, Airport. Um, we're now, I think we now know that uh, Tony Blair uh, contacted and told uh, uh, the Spanish Prime Minister Zapatero uh, that he should not shut down communications with ETA. Father Alec Reid said that the Barajas bombs were the same as the, uh, the, the bombing of the uh, Canary Wharf, which the IRA had brought, through which the IRA had brought an end to its first ceasefire in 1996. And just as the IRA had returned to the peace process and called another ceasefire, this is what ETA would do. Well, of course, uh, that proved to be proved to be wrong, I mean, uh, for various reasons, which perhaps we can discuss. Uh, ETA is in a different stage than the IRA was in, in 1994. So that's another lesson which we're supposed to draw. Um, finally, the lesson is that only the extremes can do the deal. Um, that the moderates in Northern Ireland, the parties like the Nationalist, Social Democratic and Labour Party and David Trimble's Ulster Unionist Party uh, can only go part of the way. But unless you involve uh, and listen to and accommodate the more extreme parties, you will not get peace. So those are certainly the lessons and they're pretty well codified and set out very clearly. Uh, in the speeches of Blair and in the book by Parr. Um, so now what I want to do is go through these and offer briefly a sort of criticism. Firstly, on um, the issue of inclusive dialogue. It's the experience of, of Ireland and our conflict shows that it is not always good to talk to terrorists. In 1972, which was in terms of deaths, over 400 people were killed in that year, it was the worst year uh, of the Troubles. The British government, uh, which had recently abolished the, uh, the parliament, the Stormont Parliament in, in Northern Ireland, uh, entered into secret talks with the leadership of the IRA. Jerry Adams, Martin McGuinness were taken out of prison and flown secretly to London to meet <coughs> the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, uh, William Whitelaw. Uh, and Whitelaw uh, subsequently admitted that those talks were a mistake because what those talks did was encourage the then leadership of the IRA to believe that if they intensified the armed struggle, um, uh, they would get what they wanted. So that is one example of when it is not good to talk. You've got to look at where exactly the terrorist organization is. Uh, you've got to know, really, perhaps the British government didn't know enough about the uh, different factions within the leadership of the IRA at the time. But for whatever reason, that was a mistake. Again, during the um, IRA hunger strikes of 1980 and 1981, when IRA prisoners went on hunger strike to get political status, to be treated not as criminals, but as political prisoners. Um, um, the, a settlement uh, had almost been, had almost been, uh, uh, um, had been worked out 
in negotiations between the Northern Ireland authorities and Republican prisoners. But then um, British security services opened up another channel of communication. And that encouraged the leadership of the Republican movement outside the prison to continue with the hunger, to continue with the hunger strike. So that's another example of when talking to terrorists uh, or their proxies is not a good idea. Um, secondly, um, the emphasis in the Northern Ireland model is on the talking, on inclusive dialogue. Um, one of the lessons, again a false lesson that Jonathan Powell uh, sets out in that book, is that Britain eventually learned that there was no military solution and that it had to talk. If you read the archives of the, uh, of the government of the day and the earliest British governments in 1970 and 1971 and the earliest stages of the Troubles, there's never any question on the part of the British state or of the British security services or of the British army that there is a military solution, that terrorists can only be defeated militarily. That's never a belief. Right. Um, so it's not that this was a lesson that was learned. It just so happened that there was not a terrorist leadership that was interested in any sort of realistic negotiations. That was the reason right, why the emphasis had to be, uh, particularly from the mid-'70s on, on the, um, a security-led policing um, process to deal, not, uh, to deal with the, the terrorist threat. And this approach, which emphasizes dialogue, ignores the role of the security forces from the middle of the 1970s in developing a deep knowledge of the terrorist organization itself through a whole set of techniques, surveillance techniques, the running of informers, the placing of agents. So by the end of the 1980s, nine out of 10 planned IRA operations had to be called off because the security forces had prior intelligence. Um, that is ignored in the model, right? That without hard power, you wouldn't have got a leadership within the Republican movement, within the IRA, uh, that, saw that saw the need to seek a peaceful way out because it's effectively they were being slowly, militarily defeated. And that is the key lesson, I think, which has a direct read across to, uh, this situ to the situation in Spain. The next is that there were this thing about no preconditions. There were preconditions uh, which were essential for, for our process to be successful. When the British reopened uh, communications with the leadership of the IRA in 1990, uh, and these basically led up to the first IRA ceasefire in 1994, throughout the, these, these talks, it was made clear to the IRA leadership by the British that the precondition for them being involved in any process of political talks about the future of Northern Ireland involving other parties was a ceasefire. Right. That was never, uh, and it, it was never fudged. The British never fudged it. Right. So the, the IRA people were told, you can be involved, but the precondition is that you end the violence. Secondly, this, although the, uh, many Irish nationalists and Gerry Adams have denied it, uh, 